Did you know that you can grow incredibly nutritious, delicious greens inside your home year round? Hi, I'm Kyleen, the Provident Prepper. This spring, I was unusually frustrated when my spinach and lettuce bolted. Because of the recent pandemic, I wasn't able to just run out to the store and keep my family in fresh greens. So I decided to try growing them indoors. And as you can see, it's been incredibly successful. In this video, I'll show you exactly what I have learned about growing greens indoors using inexpensive shop lights. Today, we are going to introduce you to an incredible method to grow fresh greens in your home. For me, that is so important to be able to have that food security and the freshness and the nutrition that comes from those plants. And one of the really cool things about this is that it's very inexpensive. Some of the reasons that got us motivated to grow greens indoors were the supply, access, and cost concerns. Supplies are sometimes not there, or there are recalls or other things that make those things not available. Sometimes you just don't have access to them, and we've seen that in recent months. And costs seem to be rising, and we want to be able to maintain our health using good healthy greens at reasonable costs. This is my kitchen garden and what my lettuce looks like in June. Almost as soon as the snow melts, we are able to grow sweet, delicious lettuce in our garden. But once that heat hits, our spinach and our lettuce, it bolts and we can't produce lettuce until the end of the season in the fall again. Now there are some greens that I can grow in my kitchen garden all throughout the summer. One of those is kale and another one is chard. However, I really miss lettuce when I don't have it. This is my kitchen garden during the winter. And as you can see, there is no way that we could grow any type of greens in my garden without some type of a low tunnel or a greenhouse. And recently, we've discovered that we can grow an abundance of healthy greens inside of our home in a very small footprint that aren't subject to the weather or to the insects or anything else that may attack it in our garden. Today, we're going to show you exactly what we do to grow no hassle greens inside of our own home using a very small footprint. This is a really cool design for anybody who lives in a small apartment or who really doesn't have space outside their home. They can still produce fresh greens inside their home. The greens that you see in this metal bowl were all harvested only from those four tubs on the bottom shelf. That is plenty of lettuce for our family for a few meals. And you can do that about once a week as long as you take really good care of your plants. So let's review how to set up your grow lights, the soil you need to use, the best containers, and the seeds that you'll want to get. We took a class from Tom Bartels on biointensive gardening. And I would recommend Tom's class to anyone who wants to use sustainable methods to grow an organic garden. We'll leave a link where you can learn more about Tom Bartels in the description of this video. This photo shows Tom starting his garden early in the year using four shop lights totaling 7,000 lumens. To get our garden started, we just purchased some very inexpensive shop lights at Home Depot and then we made sure that we purchased the right bulbs. You want to make sure you get a Kelvin rating somewhere between 5,000 and 6,500. That produces the ultimate growing environment. And you want to make sure you get about 2,500 or higher lumens out of each bulb. These shop lights are very adjustable using the chains that come with them. And so we raise those up and down depending on our need. And the reason why adjustable shop lights are important is that if your light is too far away from your plant, you're going to have long leggy plants. Or if you could lower that light to be closer to the plant and then raise it as the plant grows, you'll just have healthier plants. All of these shop lights are plugged into one power strip and we just turn them on and off each morning. On the right hand side, you can see a setup used by our friend Kenneth using timers. And that's something that we will be adding here very shortly. When starting the plants, it's important that you start them in a seedling or a propagation mix. 
you don't want to use just regular potting soil because the fertilizers that are contained in that potting soil will burn the tender roots. So when you first start your seedlings, start with a propagation mix or a seedling mix that doesn't have any fertilizers in it. These are seedlings that we planted in the propagation mix that are now ready to be transplanted into larger containers. I take each cup and I'll gently separate the plants that are in the cup. These five plants and one little tiny baby plant all came from the same cup. I will take all five of these starts and plant them in the container behind. The soil that you plant your starts in will largely determine your success. I like to use an organic mix that has been specially designed for growing vegetables. If you just use any potting soil that's designed to grow indoor plants, it may contain fertilizers or contents that you don't want to be eating. I always just pick an organic mix that is designed to grow vegetables in my garden and pre-moisten it really well before you put your plants in it. Now you can choose any container that you want to to drain, but this is what we decided to start with. So these are just cheap dish pans that we bought from the dollar store. It's important that you create good drainage in the bottom of these dish pans. The first batch of these dish pans that we purchased, it was really easy just to drill these holes in. But the second batch was made out of a kind of a more fragile plastic and it tended to split. So be really careful. You might want to spend a little bit more on them. Just make sure that it doesn't split when you're drilling these holes. Now we've drilled the holes in the top tub and somehow you need to separate the top tub from the water catchment dish pan that you have at the bottom. So Jonathan just had these little shavings left over from a project and I thought they would be perfect to use to elevate that top container from the bottom one. And here you can see the new transplants underneath those grow lights. In the bottom there are two tubs. The, the top tub that has the drainage holes in it contains the soil and the plants and it's set inside of the other tub and it has that wood creating a space for that water to actually drain into. You notice that the lights are down a little bit lower because they're closer to the plants so that they don't have to stretch and reach really far to get that light. I didn't have enough of the tubs to transplant everything back into. So I transplanted them singly back into some of those cups and it created a very interesting experiment. These plants have all of the conditions exactly the same, same soil, planted at the same time, transplanted at the same time. The only difference is the container. And you'll notice that lettuce in the container in front is significantly smaller than in the back tub. And the only reason that I can come up with is in the tub, they have so much more room to spread their roots and you get a much larger, healthier plant. And it was universal. Notice the mix of greens in those bottom tubs, how large the leaves are, and yet the same variety up on the top that are planted in those little cups are significantly smaller, kind of because I think they get a little bit root bound. You could use larger tubs than these dish pans, but I do have to pull them out, and I have found that the dish pans are about the right size for as heavy as they get for me. Anything larger is gonna be a little bit too cumbersome for me to deal with. So that size is perfect. And in the future, we will be using all dish pans and we won't be using those little cups anymore for anything except for starting. To start the plants, they're actually really good. Plant selection is important when you're growing your greens inside. You don't want to use head lettuce. Select loose leaf varieties because they allow you to use that cut and come again method and will allow you to produce much more from a single plant. Braising mixes or stir fry mixes are also excellent to grow indoors. Most of these are ones that you can eat fresh as a salad or that you can use in stir fries and soups and they just have a tremendous amount of nutrients in them. And fresh herbs will also grow really well underneath your lights, which will allow you to add fresh culinary herbs to your dishes year round. The cut and come again method is the method that we use to harvest. And we talked about that just a little bit earlier. But when you use this method, you want to just tear off the outer leaves of the plant. And I never harvest more than two thirds of the plant at a time, because if I do that, then I allow plenty of energy to continue to grow massive amounts of greens. The lettuce in the bowl on the right 
is what we cut off of the plants in the tub on the left. And you can see I've left plenty of growth so that it continued to grow, but we've got a significant harvest off that one little tub. Attack of the teenager. I didn't explain really well to Ben exactly how we needed to do this. He knew that it was okay to rip the leaves off, but once we had these growing in the house, he was addicted and he was going and getting them off the plant for all of his meals, but he wasn't very careful about how he did it. He just ripped all the leaves off the little plants. This is a few days after he had done that, and you can see it is absolutely growing back, but you get a better harvest if you're only selective with the outside and you leave some larger leaves on the inside of the plant. One secret to using lettuce is to cut it, wash it, and spin it dry. And then I place it in a container with a paper towel in the bottom of it. The paper towel will regulate the moisture and really helps to keep your lettuce crisp and fresh and ready to eat. And always store it in the refrigerator. It'll store for about a week, sometimes a week and a half, and it makes it really easy just to reach in there and grab the greens that you need for your smoothie or your salad or whatever. Again, the reason that we want to do this is increase food security. It means that we have access to more greens and those provide wonderful vitamins and minerals and nutrients that our bodies need and keep us healthy. And it's interesting that because they're right there next to our kitchen, we eat more because just because of the easy access. We invite you to visit the Provident Prepper and read more about exactly how to grow greens inside your home in our post, How to Grow Fresh Greens Inside Your Home All Year Long. Another video that you might be interested in that goes into more detail about how to set up your grow lights in your house is inexpensive grow lights. A Poor Man's Greenhouse is a video that we created using the winter sown method, and it teaches you how to use clear plastic bottles to start your plants outside to help you get a jump on the season. Check them out. Problem solved. As long as I have a little bit of electricity, I can keep my family supplied in fresh greens, regardless of the outside temperature or the amount of available light. And I don't have to share them with the bugs. And now for the question of the day. What experience do you have growing your food indoors? And what wisdom can you share with our viewers? Comment below. And thanks for being part of the solution.